So before we get into the vlog today, I have to explain that it's an extra long one. Uh, the reason why it's so long is because we had a few very interesting conversations and I wanted to include them in the vlog because I think it's um, educational. Uh, if you're not into long vlogs, this one might not be for you, like watch previous one or next one. Otherwise, this is jam-packed with really cool, really cool insights uh, on what it is to be a dance professional. Also, I would like to start the conversation, so if there's anything you want to say about it, just please leave comments below, like start a conversation, tell me about your experiences because I think it's very interesting. But now, just let's dive into the vlog. Good morning. Today I'm going to a workshop. I'm in charge of making really cool, a really cool video about it. So that's where I'm going right now. The dance workshop is an improv workshop, I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, this is Danae. Hi. That's Danae. Uh, so she, um, yeah, it's an improv workshop. I don't even know the guy who's teaching. We're gonna meet him. You're gonna meet him with me. My bike? Oh, bike, bike. No, no bike. No bike. No bike. So you're gonna meet him with me, uh, and I I'm gonna try to get you some insights on what the workshop was about. Just interesting stuff. <laughs> We are arriving at Flying Steps Academy. Oh, it's really are you a lot. Yes, I'm serious. This thing, these things happen. The workshop uh, is like almost empty. Sometimes um, you organize something and people don't show up, and and that's a, that's really sad. So it's a bit of a bummer. But still, I'm gonna. It's still gonna be interesting. I promise. We're kind of in crisis mode, having a conversation, like a su super deep conversation. Oh. You can say What's hi. That? That's What's a camera. That? <laughs> so, like, let's say, because well, I'm vlogging, you know. Like, oh, okay. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, uh, so, but you have a channel. I do. Like you can tell everyone what your channel. Well, you better come through. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the channel is Zenas Productions. Well, you can research my name is Ezene. I'm London, so don't watch this American accent. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay. Like, like, what, what's the what's the dance style you're doing? I do Afro beats. Afro. Oh, that's the Afro beats. Yeah, oh, like I heard that. You, I heard your workshop was dope. Thank you. I heard your workshop so was dope. Fun. But yeah, and I'm trying to. I try to. The co I have a coaching uh, thing like, like where I try to help people like, at least figure out at first what they want to do, yeah, and then afterwards uh, help them figure out how to make a blueprint for their career. Mm. Because a lot of people they just they know they want to dance, but they don't know what they want to do exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. Or how, so, to, how yeah. to do it and how yeah. to, and how to get it and, and how, how incredible like how much information you already have in your head mm -hmm. that you don't use yeah. you get to a part where people brand themselves and they yeah. you know like it's important to it's so ooh. it's so important yeah it's oh, wait, if so that's, important <laughs> yeah well like, if you suck at it if you don't if no one ever told you or you never did the research how to do yeah. it yeah it's I'm just like well, now it's it's fine. I somewhere. think the problem is also if you don't do it, the people will brand you for your like they will do it for they you. They will do it you know for you. I mean? And yeah, that's true. the worst thing ever. Yeah. I think yeah. you know, they put you in a yeah. box and then you can't get out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the weirdest teacher. I don't know that much. All I know is what I do, and it's funny. It's like what I do as well is actually so limited because it, what I do is me. <laughs> so yeah, it's but, not even a dance style. But it's that's just, yeah. that, that's exactly that's exactly the thing. Um, you're not supposed to know it all, yeah. but what you know needs to be good. Good, exactly. You know? and, that, and that's what people come for. Like, if somebody comes for your class, 
they they don't come for you to be teaching them everything mm. they want that little thing that is yours yeah. they want your personality they mm -hmm. want your approach to it and I think that's what people needs to deepen yeah instead of going like because so many dancers are like yeah but I don't I know so little I don't want to do everything I, and I want to do everything but you can't be good at everything, everything. background like I grew up learning street dancing mm -hmm. but it's when I went to university that I just I've always done African like it's always been in my blood, put on the music, yeah. yeah. But it's like I got to uni and I just noticed like, okay, we were doing hip hop, we were doing street, but nobody was doing anything to, from Africa. Yeah. Like I was just like, and we were in a, a society called the African Caribbean Society, but no one did anything African what? or Caribbean. <laughs> Everything was street hip hop, mm -hmm. like jazz. I was like, okay, cool, let's try something. And it was all a joke. And we all did it all for fun. For fun. And I remember my first phone call, and I was saying this in the class yeah, the other yeah, day, yeah, and they were yeah. like, oh, how much do you charge? You want to pay me? <laughs> like, literally, that, <laughs> that was what hit me, yeah. because I only thought that you get paid for when you did, like, contemporary, or when you did, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I didn't even put African, especially the style we did, because African, everybody thinks of it as, rah, and what we were doing was so different. Like, mm -hmm. So I didn't think people would take that seriously. And then five years later, that's all I do. <laughs> like, yeah. Literally, I wake up every morning, make up an African routine. The little white boy that I am, and mm -hmm. I want to learn that, and I'm like, I'm coming from a complete different background. I'm going to look for that person that's authentic mm -hmm. and then knows what they're doing. And yeah. I'm going to go there and I'm going to try to feel what you're feeling. Yeah. Right? It's like all in emotion. He used the key word. But it's true. It like, was feeling, not technique. Yeah. From accounting to dance. And uh, my parents were like, literally flipping out. They were like, is this girl losing her mind? Like, I had a job, I worked in an accounting firm, I then got a job in an investment bank. And like, they were just looking at me like, you want to throw all that away for dance? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Literally, my dad would talk to me for like a year. Oh, really? And he went through trying to like, trying to kick me out of the house. They go, you know, I'm, I'm from a very strict home. My mom's a reverend. Oh, my dad's a oh, great. Okay. So I was like, this, like, how am I about to tell these people that I want to dance for a living? Like, how is this going to work? But then I, I had to get, get very business savvy and say, this is the only way it can work is if I can show them that there, there's a future. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, I think parents are more concerned about, okay, are you able to pay your rent? Are you able to yeah. sustain yourself? And it, it all comes from a loving place, as much as it looks quite harsh. Yeah. But it's all from a loving place because you don't want to ever struggle. Yeah. So I had to go home, write a whole bulletin <laughs> on my five-year plan as a dancer. Oh, yeah, okay. I place it to my parents. This really? Yes. That's a great idea. But you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm gonna tell you something. I think that is the greatest thing ever. Yeah, it's true. Because that means that it's not a hobby anymore. Oh, it it's a plan. Yeah. And that's what exactly what we're trying to do. Actually, mm -hmm. is get yeah. people to do that. Yeah. Like have just a please have myself. a plan. Yeah. Just don't come into right. I want to be like, dancer. Uh, yeah. I'm a now dancer. I'm waiting for and, the and, 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 yeah. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm going to go to. And then, and then I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get a job, dance. and then like I'm gonna dance for artists. And you don't know, no, it's not. No. That's not gonna happen. I quickly realized as well that I couldn't dance for too long. I was, um, and I still dance for today. But I take on, I take on jobs, like jobs that I feel like it's worth my time, mm -hmm. worth my energy. Because there was a time when I started this whole day, people were paying like fifty pounds. Yeah, yeah. You, do, you do small stuff. Small and, yeah. and I will rehearse all night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to slay myself yeah, yeah, in this whole dancing. And it got to a point, and this was a, like a, a huge artist, like reached out to the group. We were in a girl group together, reached out to the group, and was like, um, yeah, we want you to come and dance. It was like nine songs or something ridiculous. And I said to the girls, I was just like, um, okay, so how much are you paying? They were like, oh, this is like an artist. Like, you yeah. have to do it for free. You get paid. I said, what? Yes. what? Yeah, yeah, but that's so... They do that so much. Are yeah, you crazy? This person is huge. This person is yeah. amazing. I said, no. No. Because no. no, then you lose the respect. And it's all done. Zero, and it's done. not like I didn't know how hard like, we worked as a team to get to that point. And we've done the free shows. We've done all of that. But then it was that, it was then like, I think like five, Oh no, this is what they said to me, quote unquote, they were like, ah, is it not dancing, we'll just get other girls. 
I said, okay, cool. Absolutely. That's yeah, that's right. Right. No, yeah. no, there's, it's not an issue. Yeah. Four days later, I then get a call from another company. They were like, oh, we want you to dance with another artist for another and show. You. And, and I was just like, yeah, but what do you want? And this is me, and I've never asked for this amount in my life. I was just like, thousand pounds for all that rehearsal all that. and in my head i've never in my life opened my mouth to say i was just like these people are probably gonna slap me and be like but i was like do you know what i feel let me just try you know and they were like i have the balls now i have the balls now let me go for it and literally they were like oh, okay yeah. it's crazy but that's the thing yeah when you say that they respect you more like, yeah exactly oh, like, oh you have a prize yeah like, you're good you're like you, you appreciate your own value yeah and then they both Exactly. They did not even complain one bit. Yeah. Then they took us on an Africa tour. Then they took us, like, then literally that's how our fame started. And, like, it just kept building and building from So there. sometimes you lose one thing and gain and gain yeah. so much more. Even when I went to Africa, I went to Nigeria for like seven months to work and I wanted to, like, kind of open an institute there. And I struggled to work there because I was like, and I'm Nigerian myself, and I struggled because. They, there was no respect for dancers there. Really? Have you ever seen a video? It's from, uh, it's a TED talk. I don't know if you're TED. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Sir Ken Robinson. He's talking about how school kills creativity. Oh, yeah, oh, I saw that. And then he yeah. explains in that, that yeah. from sure. everything, like if you take society, if you take education, and you have on top, you have um, everything that's science. Mm -hmm. And then you go a little lower, and then you have like, uh, you know, like uh, people that la uh, languages, and then like, you know, like you're a little lower, and then at the bottom you have the arts. Okay, so and then, but in the arts, if you look at it, hierarchy. like there's a hierarchy, like you have like music, and then you're painting, and then sculpture, and dance is completely on the bottom. And you know what? It's even worse. Because if you take dance, mm -hmm. it's ballet, Everything that's urban is on the bottom. So we're considered by yeah. society. Now urban and then yeah. underneath urban is African. It's so true. It's so true. So I'm the only creative in my family. Mm -hmm. Like when I say my family, I mean like the whole extended family. So aunties, uncles, cousins, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the only one, <laughs> only human being. So like every year. <laughs> We go home, like we go back to like the village. So not even the city, the village, the township, like where all the where we all grew up. And we stay in the family house. And every single Christmas, they bring us all together, all the grandkids, and kind of sit us in a circle. And basically, you're just meant to talk about your achievement every year. Okay, so they bring us in this circle. Don't remember, I'm the only dancer. <laughs> so they start with the first one, the first one coming. Yeah, I own my own business. I do this, I do that. The cousin comes through. I'm an engineer. The other one, I'm a doctor. The other one, I'm a lawyer. And then it was my turn. <laughs> and I came through. And it's so funny that I felt, and I felt very slightly inferior. Yeah, it was in a weird way, no for no reason, because of all that pressure. Like, it was like, what am I doing with my life? But then, for a moment... It's the best I could do in my life. No, no, but then, for a moment, I realized that I looked at everyone in my house, and I was like, this one. <laughs> no one has traveled as much as I have. Yeah, exactly. You haven't yeah. seen what no, I've seen. No, like, you haven't no, seen no, the no, world no, the way no, I've seen no, the world. No, and that's a crazy thing. But your friends, they probably also don't like their job, but you love it. Oh, they hate their job. So that, you yeah. see, so you... Okay, it's not a hobby. Yeah. It's now a business. You have to run it like a business. Like, I genuinely take lunch the same time as so I try to take lunch in my head. I have to wake up the same time as a 9 to 5 because as a creative, you have to work 20 times harder yeah. to maintain whatever we have. I was saying to the, totally agree with that. I was saying to the girls yesterday, like, I can never, I can never went understand when a dancer or when someone in creative said, I'm not, I'm not doing anything today. What? Have you lost your mind? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, What do you think? You don't, you don't need to put something on the work craft. You don't need to like, you have to. You have to do something. You have to be proactive. Like, there's times like, okay, I don't have one for a week. I'll pick up like six routines, put up something on social media. From that video on social media, someone's going to put me in a job. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's something that really drives me nuts, that people don't understand that they have to... That as soon as you earn money, if, if that's your income, right, as a dancer, 
um, if, if dance is your income, then you're a business. Mm -hmm. It's not that you have to act like it. you are a you fucking business. business. Yes. If you don't behave like that, if you don't promote yourself, if you don't uh, organize yourself, if you're not on time, if you're not like, you know, like reach out to people, network, all that stuff, mm -hmm. don't do that. You don't have jobs. Yeah. And if you don't have jobs, you don't pay your rent. And exactly. that's why people are like artists are poor. Mm -hmm. We're not poor. We can, we can earn a lot of money. We have money. Actually, yeah. you can make money out of anything. Like, yeah. I've, I've learned that, like, the easiest way. Like, I remember this time I did some, like, terrible business dealings in Nigeria. Like, terrible. I came back broke. <laughs> and then I got home, and I remember my, I, I said to my dad, like, Dad, I need, like, 20 pounds. Like, I am, like, dying at this moment. <laughs> yeah. My dad gave me 20 pounds. Two days later, I put up a master yeah, class. I went, what? The way my money just went back up, I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> like, there's no reason. Like, you can't just sit at home and just be like, you know, I'm going to wait for a job. Create a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As dancers, we all get to that point where we're broke, and then we get a lot of money. Oh, my God, that is so true. When I tell you, I was like, and that was the time when I almost kind of, like, went into, like, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should really try and get a normal job. Because exactly yeah. that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you all get to that. Like, you maybe I should get a normal job. I'm panicking. Even like because I don't have anything to eat. I'm starving. I'm no. telling you, it was so bad. And then I'm like, my parents are then looking at me like, we told you. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is the worst. Yeah. This is the worst, this is the so worst thing bad. ever. When your mother's like, yeah. I told you, you should become a lawyer. Yeah, this is it. Like yeah. it's like your own fault. <laughs> the times where, um, where I had the thought of like quitting yeah. dancing was because I was going to a lot of auditions and they would tell me you're too small, yeah. Yeah. you're a great dancer, you have a pretty face, you're too tiny and I would go to a lot of auditions and they would always tell me the same and at the end of the day they would pick the tall blonde girl with long legs who can't dance. And what did you do? You created your own agency, agency and you your own dance. Exactly. It's not you, like, it's not yeah. personal, it's, it's you look. Yeah. 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 You know, and they're just superficial. It's just superficial, sorry. sorry. That's, it, right? that, that, that's the way this industry is put together because it's yeah. also very physical. And then you have to yeah. Yeah. understand. But then you took, you took this thing, you had a problem here, and what did you do? You switched it around. You found, you found a solution for it. The solution was, well, you're not going to hire me, I'm going to hire myself. I create my own job. And that's exactly what you said. Fuck you. Ooh, that was a nice little conversation. Sorry if the sound quality is not that great, but there's nothing I could do about it. And, um, there's a lot of reverb in the building and uh, people were coming in and out. It's just, I'm sorry. I hope you had something interesting coming out of it. But I'm gonna first uh, do the interview with him. Yeah, and then because Elsie's like, like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <sweating>. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, sure. You, you have to be strong, if, right? You have yeah, to. If you if you are um, how to say self confident, you can be a good performer. Mm -hmm. But the self confidence doesn't come from you being strong or famous. It's totally unrelated. You can yeah. you can suck and be a, a really ugly or really yeah. weird, but you st still can be confident. Yeah. So it's really in your mind. The confidence comes from your mind. <laughs> A super cool conversation before this guy did this little freestyle now we're going for food <laughs> Nothing left. It's 
So this is the boss of that perfect place. <laughs> Like, no. like, do we have to walk? Do we have to drive? Do we no, have to? We have to take the bus. The bus? We could also walk, but it's no, hard no, to bus, walk. bus, no. bus is fine. We like bus. Shopping. Shopping sounds like a good idea. Nothing. It's not gonna be for today. I think the shopping is gonna end up now. I'm also gonna end the vlog right here because I think it's been long enough and enough happened today. So guys, see you in the next one. Bye.